Okay, here we are again. Sections. Now you go, you've already done a tutorial on this, why are you doing it again? Well, two reasons really. The first one is it was pretty rubbish and uh, I waffled on for ages and I have learned quite a bit since starting this channel. And secondly, there's been a few updates that change things around a little bit and the previous one has some inaccuracies which may make it difficult for new people. So anyway, this tutorial, I am gonna cover a few extra things. So even if you have watched the previous one and you got this working, you may wanna hang around a bit because there's some new tips that you might not know about. Okay, so done as I've created a rough structure thanks to our friends at Flowbase. And uh, what we've got here is we've just got a, a simple heading section. It's got a couple of items. So here it headers, some long form text, images, bit of buttons and whatnot. And what we're gonna do is just work through this kind of bit by bit and show you how to make completely editable sections that you can customize beautifully within Shopify. So the first one that we wanna do is we're looking at heading. So now text is relatively straightforward. Just literally drop a text block, click on the text block, head on over to custom attributes, go into here. And if you head on over into the Udesi University and you find sections in this navigation down here, you'll see something called text. So click on that. The great thing about what they've done is all of these are clickable. Uh, you will eventually get to remember them and it makes your life a little bit quicker. But so anyway, click that one option text. It says it's copied. Head on over into here, go to name, paste it in a new custom attribute, and then we just give it a name. Now I give it something called like, heading. And the cool thing is, is that as long as if the section doesn't have two attributes or names called heading, you can reuse that one over and over and over again. It makes it really easy for uh, kind of naming stuff. Obviously, if there's two headings in here, so if I duplicate that one, this one needs to be called heading two. The reason being is that, that basically just creates the link. Uh, and if you've got that twice, then you will only be able to edit the one, which will end up editing both of them. All right. So that's that. Now, longer form text is quite easy as well. So again, back over to here, and we see something called text area. So copy that, go back in, it has some attributes, and pop it in there. So we'll call this one paragraph. Okay, so now you would have seen there as well, there's something here called rich text. Now we've just done the text area one, and why would you have one versus the other? Well, the main reason being rich text gives you a little bit more flexibility with able to create like paragraph spacing or bold copy and whatnot. So if you wanted to do that, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll just copy that option there, head on over. We will go into this section here, control E, and we'll type in rich text. And all you're literally doing is you're plopping that custom attribute on here and typing it, I don't know, we'll call it rich para graph. All right, uh, what you're not doing is you're not placing it on any of these elements. All right, so that's that. Now it's create a, a link, so a URL. So we wanna be able to link these up to the different bits. It's pretty straightforward. Just go into here, we go down to our URL, um, click option URL, hit on echo, and you guessed that, let me just call this one Facebook. Uh, all right, save, and then the same for this one. And we'll call it Twitter. Done. All right, that's pretty much those little bits. So images. Now, this particular section has something new that you may not know. And if you've watched the previous tutorial, it's not in there. So something new for you guys. Right, so here you go. So we click on the image. Now you guessed it. We go back in here and we go down to image and we click on option image and we head on over to this and we go into our custom attribute again, copy paste that and we give it our image. So we'll call it hero image. Now, here's the interesting thing. When you convert your dynamic images, so the ones that you create using a collection list or whatever like that, any of the images on there automatically get a defined source set. So they'll go bigger, smaller, 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 smaller. If you want the images to be editable, within Shopify. Up until recently, you couldn't actually have them as a dynamic source set without having to go manually code it. However, there's been a new addition and it's a new attribute called image sizes. And so what we do is we just literally click on the custom attribute again, and we just open that up and we add a new one we call image dash sizes. This will be in the description. And now we can specify the sizes that we want those images to be served at. So 
Uh, for instance, this is a relatively small image. We're not going; doesn't need to be the full the full width. So we can just say we want to have it a maximum width of 800. So it'll create a source set at 800. We can add a comma because now we want to see the different breakpoints, and maybe that image gets smaller based on things. So we'll just go 800, 600. Uh, 500, 400, and 200. Now, as the browser gets resized and we start to go jump down onto this type of stuff, the browser will serve an image that's been resized through the server as it goes. So this is really helpful when we start to look at things like page speed. So just to kind of go over it again, so image dash sizes, and then just add the sizes that you want to do. You can use the default Webflow ones, and again, I'll put those down below and you can kind of um, use those if you want. But it's a good idea just to put them in there and make them the size that you need for that thing. So you don't, if it's a thumbnail image, you're never going to need a 1920 wide image. You're going to need a 400 of 200 width image. So just use your, use your brain and kind of do that. Okay, so that's the custom attributes for this section completed. So the last step you just need to do is make it into a symbol, which is pretty straightforward. Now, if we're looking at this, uh, you can see that basically I haven't done the navigation, but there is a tutorial on that. So find it. Uh, all right. And so the last step what we need to do is we'll just collapse this for the time being. Just literally click on the top level hierarchical object, right click on the little blue bar and just click create symbol. And we'll just call this one, I don't know, home hero. All right, done. So when we convert it, it's going to be all good. So now the next section is going to be some blocks. What do blocks do? So blocks allows you to create one object. And then when you go into Shopify, you can literally hit click, 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 and it will add as many blocks as you want. So something like this is really useful. So at the moment here, we've only got six. But now what happens if your client adds another three and you need nine? Well, the blocks will allow you to do that and configure that individually. Now, there's a few elements here that we want to kind of cover off. Obviously, we can do our text object and text areas on here. So we can just literally pop those in. So option text and uh, whatever we want to call it. And option text area. And again, whatever we wanted to call it. So that's done. So now we're going to start looking at, at this section. So because it's a block, we only want to create one object. So we'll just delete all of those. Uh, you can see it's set up in a grid. So that's really handy. So you create the next one, 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 and it will naturally in auto flow, which is really useful. But we have a few elements here that we want to do. So one, we have to create the block functionality, which we'll do that now. OK, so the thing about blocks is you have to add the custom attribute kind of to like the really, really top level. Because then basically it says, yep, this is the block. And then everything inside of it is controllable. Now, this particular structure would be completely fine because we could just kind of go here and we can say um, block and call it, let's call it features block. All right. And the reason where I'm getting that from is in here, if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see there's block. Now, the problem is, is if this was a link block, OK, so convert that to link block. Now that block will no longer work because we want to be able to set the URL of that particular block. So we need it to be within the block so that we can tell the block, yes, it's a block. OK, it will become clearer later on. So follow along a little bit. Anyway, so what we need to do in order to do this, we'll get rid of this, this block here because it's we want to be able to configure that URL. So we can just go in here and say Topshin URL. And we'll call it uh, block URL. All right, so now that's a URL. Now we want to be able to make it into a block. So what we need to do is actually just add a div. And this is where it gets interesting. So we just drop that into here. And then on this block at the top hierarchy, we can now add the, the block option. So just head onto here, click block, back into here, custom attribute block, and we'll call it feature block. Fine. And now what that means is that URL is now customizable. All right. So that's that. So now we can let's move on to our, our easy stuff. So the, we'll go to the title. You guessed that's option uh, text. And we'll call it heading. And we've got option text area. All 
Fine. All right. So now let's do this background color and it'll be kind of nice to be able to control that. So what we will do is go back to our trusty university and you'll see that option background color into here. And just want to basically add in our custom attribute, background color, and we'll call it icon color. All right. Now what that does is it basically will just add that little picker so we can choose whatever color we want to apply to this. Right, okay, so now another helpful little tip that you wouldn't have had in the previous tutorial. See what I did there. What do we want to do is we want to use SVGs and you get really nice clean icons. But a lot of image pickers, specifically like in Shopify, you can't add the SVG. So what we need to use is an, is an embeddable HTML element. So sounds scary, but it's not. Uh, so what we need to do is delete that and we'll just add in a div, all right? And we'll call that, so that was integration icon. All right, so that's that. And we'll just give it a size. So we'll say 50 and 50. And now what we need to do is just add in our HTML. So option HTML. And we go into here, type here, and we'll call this one icon okay so the icon is now done now the last last one we need to kind of look at is buttons now buttons can take two things so the first one is we want to be able to control the text and the second one we want to be able to control the url so basically into here so you guessed it it is option text and we call this one button text and the next one is we will do a option url and we'll call it button URL. Okay, so that's it. Now the last thing we need to do is just convert this to a symbol, export it, job done. All right, so we'll do the same thing. Select the master layer, create symbol, and we'll call this one features. All right, just run through our normal kind of conversion process. Okay, so that's the conversion, it's all set up. So now what we need to do is just show you how this thing, how this thing drives really. So if you have, don't see this, head on over to online store, click on your customize and your theme, and you will see the two sections that we created are there. So now what we need to do is just basically go to click on the homepage hero and we can change this to whatever we want. So hello world and sort it. Okay, and then here we can change this to paragraph to something incredibly well written. Uh, the rich text, the same, some amazing copy. Uh, I want to bold this, so, and I want to add in a paragraph so we get a bit more flexibility. And if we see that down here, it's starting to do what we want it to do. Ta-da, all right. Uh, homepage hero image. So if we click on, I don't know, let's use that one. Uh, if we hit save and then we go into our page, refresh that. And now if I inspect this, we will see all of these 600, 500, 400, 200. It's serving the image at the size that we need it, which is awesome. Okay. Uh, back into here, so we can add in our alt text here as well. So whatever that image is called, and we refresh that, we'll see our alt text is there. Great, back into here, and we scroll down. These are pretty straightforward, so www.google.com, fine, or uh, twitter.com. your destiny, you do whatever you want with it. All right, so that's that. So if we hit save, uh, now if we go to the cool thing, so we have this now add a feature block. So if we add those and we can see it's creating those blocks and we can just keep adding these as much as we want, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful. Useful navigations, useful all sorts of places. Okay, so let's go to the first one and we will, we've got these first things here. So straightforward, we can change that to whatever we want. Paragraph, again, whatever we want. Obviously, if you want to, you can style this up how you want, remove the, the link bits and bobs so that you don't get this underscoring, you do you, 
type of thing. Uh, now we'll just do a, a, we'll say that that goes to a page and it goes to contact page just for shits and giggles. Uh, and then we can change the icon color. So let's do something kind of like that. All right, so now the last bit is this kind of hello world icon, and this is just HTML. So if you've not done this before, when you create an SVG, you can save it, uh, obviously. And if you right click and you open with a notepad or similar thing on Mac, you get presented with this type of code. So all you need to do is just copy that and head on into your thing, whap it there, hit save, and there's your icon. Now, one tip with doing the SVG route, make sure it's minified. So when you save it out of the program of your choice, I use Affinity Program, so you can save it for like a small digital file and it just minimizes the, the, the code a bit. But now that's completely scalable and job done. Uh, and that's it, woohoo, finished. Much better tutorial, hopefully, uh, a lot shorter. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, any of the links below are affiliate links. I hope you like the new shorter format. If you've got any uh, suggestions, tips, tricks, or anything that you would like me to cover off, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Cheerio, bye.